Have you ever wondered what a futuristic SUV may look like? Or what a baby Yoda wearing hip hop clothes may look like? Probably not, but a new technology called Stable Diffusion is making it possible to turn anything in your imagination into a work of art. Over the last year, we've seen some incredible advances in artificial intelligence. You may have seen my previous videos on GPT-3 or Dolly. If you like that sort of thing, definitely hit subscribe and follow along because Stable Diffusion is one of the most incredible technologies I've seen in a long time. So stable technology is a technology that transforms text input into graphical images. You enter a text prompt and it'll produce an image. Stable diffusion can create all sorts of things, including people, paintings, landscapes, buildings. And it's been trained on millions of images, giving it visual knowledge of humanity. The technology is a breakthrough, but the thing that sets stable diffusion apart from previous solutions is that it's entirely open source. This means that anyone with a computer and a really good graphics card can try it all by themselves and run amazing images. It also means that thousands of hobbyists, engineers, and entrepreneurs are creating amazing new products and technologies and helping advance the technology at an incredible rapid pace. So how does it work? I won't go too deep into the technical details of exactly some of the nuances of stable diffusion, but here are the core steps. First, the model is trained on millions of images across the internet to figure out what images correspond to what words. This is called contrastive language image pre-training or CLIP. Next, the model really figures out how to remove noise. It does this by looking at the original image and then adding noise to that image or diffusion. The artificial intelligence then gets really good at diffusing the noise or figuring out how that image looks without the noise. We do this with more and more noise and over time the artificial intelligence gets stable at diffusing the noise and this is where the term stable diffusion comes from. Now what you can do is you can give it a new text prompt that it's never seen before, give it a bunch of diffuse noise, put it through the model, and bam, you have brand new images. Now the technology is really amazing and there are three easy ways to get started with stable diffusion. There are a number of online sites where you can upload some images and get avatars back. There are even Discord communities where you can simply type into a Discord community a prompt and get a result back. Many of these services are paid or come with paid membership, but it's a really easy way to get started without needing to know any technical jargon for stable diffusion. The second way to get started is with Google Collab. Google Collab is a fantastic online resource where you can find a stable diffusion script run that script directly in the cloud using Google's graphics card processing. This allows you to really get started cheaply and easily without some of the setup and process needed. This also allows you to experiment with lots of different scripts in lots of different ways to use Google Collab and customize it to your needs. The third way is to use Stable Diffusion on your own desktop. I have seen scripts that will let this run on a Mac. I've had some trouble running it. I've had the most luck running it on a PC with a really nice graphics card, either NVIDIA 3060 or higher. Now, Stable Diffusion is absolutely amazing. It's able to produce all sorts of art. You're even able to train Stable Diffusion with your own images, your own photos, so you can put yourself into the art itself, which is absolutely mind-blowing amazing. Now, there are some pros and cons to Stable Diffusion. It is a really new technology. It's really only a few months old, and it's evolving really quickly. The tools to set up Stable Diffusion, if you're running it on your own machine, require a little bit of technical sophistication. If you aren't particularly technically sophisticated, there are these online tools that I mentioned before, like Midjourney and others, that make it really accessible for you to just play around with text prompts. Now, some of the cons of Stable Diffusion Again, since it's so early, there are some weird image generation issues. It's not particularly good at generating hands. Human hands seem to be a real issue for stable diffusion. It also has a lot of issues with text or anything that has text in it. So sometimes those things don't really turn out correctly. The technology is evolving very quickly and it is a ton of fun to play around with. One of the things that does need a little bit of fine tuning is stable diffusion is run by inputting prompts. But sometimes these prompts are a little bit esoteric. Again, because the stable diffusion was trained on millions of images on the internet, you kind of have to learn how to speak 
stable diffusion prompt language. And so sometimes you have to tune these prompts in such a way to get these beautiful results. There are prompt libraries online where people are producing prompts or sharing prompts that produce really exceptional results. But the space is really early. It's really exciting. And it's just a lot of fun. So I think Stable Diffusion will be incredibly disruptive in the art and creative space. There are a lot of places where people are exploring how to do art collaboratively with Stable Diffusion. It'll often produce elements of assets that you can't fully use, but you can incorporate in your own art. And so folks are using in painting or they're exporting pieces of Stable Diffusion art to Photoshop and they're iterating with that art there. More than anything, I think it's exciting to see how we can use Stable Diffusion, creativity and art to spur our own creativity. I'm Greg Reyes. I love talking about entrepreneurship, technology and design. I hope I'll catch you in the next one.